discussing about wave function and bonds interpretation before going into this let us see what is a wave function we discussed in our previous lectures that according to de broglie with every moving particles there is a matter wave associated with that and that matter wave is known as de broglie wave as well if it is a wave then there is something to describe the wave and based on which we can describe the behavior of the particle and that is what is defined by this wave function this is a function which represents a matter wave or de broglie wave the wave function describes the wave in terms of its position and time that is psi of xt in one dimensional psi of xt means psi is the wave function and it is in terms of its position that is x because i have taken this in one dimension so its position can be represented by a single coordinate and if it is in the x direction then it is written x if it is y or z you can write z or y also that is not an issue so psi of xt is a wave function in one dimension which is represented by its position x and the time coordinate t similarly for three dimension this can be represented by psi of x y z t sometimes it may be written psi of r t and that r is a factor which is defined by these coordinates x y and z so these are the representations of wave function in one dimension and three dimension now psi is complex in general generally this wave function is a complex wave number as you all know complex means there should be a real part and an imaginary part will and this gives the information about the position or location of the particle when it particle is moving at what time what will be the location how it is the location is changing with respect to time all these things informations are given from this wave function now this wave function gives the probability of finding the particle at a certain location like if some particle is moving then at a particular location what is the probability that we can find the particle at a particular instant which we are interested of that probability is obtained from this wave function and this wave functions interpretation how we can interpret from the wave function how can how we can obtain the probability all those things are given by max born in the year 1926 according to this born's interpretation the square of the wave function that is psi mod square at a particular point is proportional to the probability of finding the particle at that point if at a single location the probability is given then that square of the wave function is directly proportional to that probability psi mod square just now i told you this is proportional to the probability of finding the particle at a particular point what is this quantity is called this is called probability density now psi mod square can be written as psi into psi star here i have written psi into psi star because as in the previous slide i told you psi is in general complex in nature so i cannot write psi square directly i have to take the complex conjugate of psi and multiply both the things to obtain psi mod square this psi star over here is the complex conjugate of the wave function psi the probability density is always real and positive what is probability density that is psi mod square which is the product of the wave function and its complex conjugate that is always real as and positive let us see how it is happening as the wave function is a complex i can write psi is equals to a plus ib this is the general notation for a complex variable here a is the real part and this ib is the complex part if psi is equals to a plus ib then its complex conjugate psi star should be equals to right a minus ib 
Then psi mod square can be obtained by multiplying the wave function with its complex conjugate that is psi into psi star that is equals to a plus ib into a minus b. This I can put the formula a square minus b square formula that will be equals to a square minus ib whole square that is i square b square and we all know i square is equals to minus 1 and that's what this minus and minus 1 that will become plus so it is a square plus b square and square of any quantity is always positive so here a square is positive b square is positive that's what this whole quantity is positive so this verifies this statement that probability density is always real and positive now we see the Bonds interpretation in one dimension what it is just saying over here one dimension what it says that if the wave function of a particle has the value psi at some point x the probability of finding the particle between x and x plus dx is proportional to psi mod square dx let us understand this what is uh, this statement is telling this is a one dimensional figure let the wave function at this point x is represented by psi of x then the probability of the finding the particle between this x and x plus dx in this small interval what is the probability that we will get the particle at that interval that is equals to psi mod square dx where psi is the wave function at the point x i have taken to the right hand side you can go to the left hand side as well no problem that is a small interval across the point x now coming to the three dimensional case it states that the probability of finding the particle in an infinitesimal volume d tau is equals to dx dy dz that is the volume d tau at a point r is proportional to psi of r mod square d tau what this statement says let us understand this is a three dimensional space i am taking a point a with a position vector r and the position coordinates are x y and z now i am interested to find out the probability inside this small volume across the point a if it is point a i have taken a small volume volume around the point a and as it is a small infinitesimal volume let its dimensions are dx along x axis dy along y axis and dz along z axis that is what this d tau over here that is the infinitesimal volume of length dx breadth dy and height dz that is equals to dx dy and dz so this small infinitesimal volume whichever whatever is taken that is across the point a where we are interested to find out the probability so in this small infinitesimal volume the probability of finding the particle is equals to psi of r mod square d tau. Now when a particle is moving, if we will consider the whole space, it is definite that we can get the particle at some or other point, right? So that's what this integration, this is from minus infinity to plus infinity, that means the integration is, is considered across the whole space this is psi of r mod square d tau this is the probability of finding the particle in a small infinitesimal volume across the point r then if we we'll integrate it over the whole space we will find the probability of finding the particle in whole space and obviously that will be available in some or the other point that means we can definitely find the point at some location if we are finding the particle then the probability is equals to 1 that's what this integration is equals to 1 and this condition is also known as normalization condition 
Sometimes what happens in your exams, you will be given with one web function and you were asked to find the normalization condition. In that case, what you have to do? So this is the normalization condition. Now we'll see if a wave function is given, let, let this psi of RT is the given wave function and you were asked to find out the normalization condition. What does this mean? Then in that case, if you have to take some psi n of RT, that is this uh, n over here represents that this is the normalized wave function and this is the given wave function then normalized wave function is equals to a constant times the given wave function now according to the normalization condition if the wave function is normalized that means we will be getting the probability of finding the particle over the whole space is equals to 1 that is psi n of rt mod square d tau is equals to 1 and that integration is taken over the whole space that is minus infinity to plus infinity. Now in place of this psi n of rt I can write this c psi of rt then it will be equals to c mod square again I am writing because this is psi n mod square is equals to psi n into psi n star and psi n star will be equals to c star psi star and this c into c star will come out as c mod square and inside the bracket psi into psi star that is psi mod square. So this integration is equals to 1. From here which one is the normalization condition? This total equation represents the normalization condition and in this equation this c over here that is the normalization con constant. So this c mod square is equals to, if you take this integration to the right hand side, it is 1 divided by psi of r whole square d tau. The integration is taken from minus infinity to plus infinity. So if you get this value from here and multiply that with the given wave function, then you will get the normalized wave function. If it is already normalized, then c will all obviously coming to be 1. And this C mod is the normalizing constant which you may ask to find out in your exam. Now we will see some of the properties of an acceptable wave function. All the wave functions if you write something that is not acceptable. What are the conditions that will say yes it is an acceptable wave function. So this should be single valued. What is the meaning of single value? If I will take a wave like this, then at any point, if I will consider this point, then there is a single value for the wave. And this point also a single value. Similarly, at each and every point, the value of the wave function, whatever is there, that is a single value. We don't have more number of values for a particular location or position. So that is the meaning of it should be single value. Now the second property is it should be finite everywhere. This means that this wave cannot go to infinity. It is a wave so it should have some finite value at any of the location you consider. Okay. The next property says that the wave function and its first derivative should be continuous. What is the meaning of this sentence? This is a wave over here whatever I have shown here. So you can see it is having a continuous value. There is no discrete or this wave is not uh, discontinuous at some point. So this means that its derivative will also because it it has some value at each and every point that means its derivative will also have some value at each and every point and that is the meaning of the sentence that the two wave function and its derivative should be continuous then the last property is it should be normalized what we have already discussed whenever you are writing a wave function you have to check whether it is normalized or not if it is normalized it's okay if not, then you have to do the normalization and find the proper appropriate wave function. Today we will stop here. 
Next class we will see one more interesting concept that is an important concept in, concept in quantum mechanics that is Schrodinger equation and in that we will be requiring these concepts what we discussed today. So I recommend you should go through this video properly and understand all the concepts and don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. All the best. Bye.